Uh, the university has embraced the concept that the payment of tuition fees by students is a good thing for the university and for the region and for everyone else. That's the first thing. The principle has been embraced. What we are now looking to do is to work through how best to implement fee strategies. Because we know, we know a great deal about the impact of fee strategies on students, on campuses, on families. So we embrace the concept. The concept is not controversial. And you may recall that Minister Jones had asked myself and the three other principals of tertiary institutions, the four principals, the Cato campus, the community college, the polytechnic, and Erdison College. And the four principals wrote a report on how best to implement tuition fees. The report accepted that tuition fees are a good thing and inevitable. We have, the government of course, like the university, we have settled upon an 80-20 model. The 80-20 model is the model that currently exists across the Caribbean in UWI, where the student pay 20%, the government pays 80%. What happened in Port of Spain at St. Augustine campus is instructive. Under the Manning government, fees were introduced, the 20%, and then removed. So Trinidad and Tobago went 20%, later reversed, and returned to 100%. Because the impact of the 20%, it was recognized that it was an international interest. And Trinidad reverted. The current government is a very strong supporter of the 100% model. Now, in our report, in our report to the minister, we said there are possibilities. Maybe the students could pay 5% in the first year. The private sector could maybe add 10% through a, a modality which the government could choose, whether it's a, a fiscal instrument, whether it's a tax on financial institutions, assets. Uh, you may recall that last year, the Jamaican government uh, developed an asset tax on financial services institution, uh, developed a significant fund for social policy. So governments always have instruments available to them. The question is, how do you share the burden in the short to medium term? Now, we have proposed 5, 10, 15 graduation uh, with the grandfathering of existing students, the students who came in, and you say, for example, you give them two years, complete, and move out. So the, the fee burden would fall increasingly upon each increasing generation of students. So there, there are models and there are strategies. So the fee issue is not the issue. It's, it's the, the size of it, the suddenness of it, and so on. Those are the logistics of implementation, those are the issues. So, my own sense then is that if the minister who works with us very closely, and I, I think you need to understand that the, the principal of these university campuses, and certainly in my case, we meet with our education ministers on a very regular basis. We, we do not do anything without that consultation. The, the, the relation between the principal and the minister has to be watertight. Talking, meeting, strategizing. There is that, there is that bond. And I have, I have enjoyed, uh, over my time here, uh, excellent relations with all of the education ministers. Uh, in this instance, Minister Jones and I have, have worked very intimately, very closely, and doing our best to move education, not only university, but to move to move education. So, if there is any room at all for a, a midstream adjustment, there's no harm. There is no harm, and there is no shame on any government or any institution 
that haven't developed a policy, looked at the impact of the policy, and make adjustments. There is always something called a midterm review. There is always a review of a policy year one, year two, you review and you adjust. So yes, if there is a perception that something can be altered having reviewed the first year and seen the consequences of the first year, you adjust and review year by year, and over time you get it right. But no one should imagine that a government policy will have 100% effectiveness in one, in one swing. Constant review, constant discussion, re-evaluation, changes, adjusting, getting it right. And especially if you are developing a policy as enormous as a tuition fee policy, that year by year assessment and review should be an ongoing part. And yes, we would encourage all governments to look at their fee system on a systematic basis, review, adjust, and go forward until you are satisfied that you've gotten it right. On a per capita basis, the researchers at KFIL uh, were quite advanced, quite advanced in terms of the international publishing of their research, uh, measured in terms of quality as well as quantity. So the UWI, the UWI agenda at KFIL, I think is quite satisfactory in that regard, that Mona and St. Augustine had very strong research cultures. And KFIL was, as the youngest campus, a landed campus, was still in its infancy. But KFIL has risen up uh, and has been able to, to hold its own in respect of the other more established campuses. So yes, we've made significant headway, and I believe that the academics here uh, are satisfied that they can now uh, relate, relate to their colleagues uh, on, on other campuses as, as equals. We, we are all happy for that. We are all happy for that. Now, you must remember, when I transferred, when I transferred from the Mona campus where I started my career in 1979, and I transferred to KFIL in the 80s. And I remember uh, many of my colleagues felt that I was making a mistake because KFIL at that time was not invested with the research capacity, the library facilities, the laboratories, the, the, the dynamic intellectual culture was not yet here because it was still a young campus. What we have tried to do uh, is to say, okay, KFL has come of age. It celebrated its 50th anniversary last year. But as it moved towards its 50th anniversary, one of the outstanding features uh, of KFL was its research output. And that was a major development. It is true that, generally speaking, across the Caribbean, we need greater alignment uh, between the educational content and the process of wealth creation. There is no doubt about that. Uh, the alignment is not yet as we would wish it to be. Um, in some areas, we have good alignment. In other areas, we are a little off target. But that is a process of strategic planning and of change. The conversation, for example, I had uh, last week with uh, Education Minister Thwaite of Jamaica was precisely on this subject. Um, how are we going to align the, the content of programs in science and technology, uh, and social sciences especially, with the need to stimulate the competitiveness of the economy, with the need to generate a new entrepreneurial uh, class with, with, with energy? How are we going to combine and align these issues? These are issues, I believe, that are germane to strategic planning. Now, I had the opportunity to address the University of the West Indies Council Friday morning. And uh, a critical part of what I had to say uh, was this. We are coming to the end of our current strategic plan, 2012-2017. Uh, and next year, we are going to be beginning the process 
of conceptualizing the next strategic plan, 2017-2022. But we will begin that process uh, next year in earnest. Clearly, the, the principal focus of strategic planning in UWA has to be and must be how are we going to get this region out of this economic recession? That has to be top priority. How are we going to participate in greater wealth creation? And as we speak about wealth creation, we have to speak about wealth redistribution. Because we do not want to generate wealth that is going to be consolidated in the hands of a minority, and the majority of our citizens do not have the benefit of that wealth. So we have to focus on how the university will interact with the owners of capital, the owners of wealth, as well as the ordinary citizen, our graduates as well. How are we going to create an entrepreneurial mentality that will focus on investment, reinvestment, and wealth generation? This has to be clearly a number one priority for the University of the West Indies. That Barbados is one of the first countries in the world to recognize China, the People's Republic of China. And therefore, they see us, and uh, Minister McLean was excellent in her articulation at this point. They see us as a class one friend, because we are one of the oldest uh, friends that they have had in the world, in the world politic. Let, therefore, the university take advantage of the Barbados-China protocol and enable China to bring its academic programs into the Caribbean in order to conceptualize its future policy trusts in the hemisphere. So this is really a win-win situation for us. So we will have a jointly owned university, UWI and the Global Institute for Software Technology in Suzhou, two universities coming together to build a university in the Caribbean in order to deliver a new generation of science and technology content to young Caribbean citizens. And, and guess what? We propose, and this has been accepted by our Chinese counterparts, that every student who graduates from the Sujo UWI Institute for Software Technology, each student will be entitled to a six months internship in China. And they will be able to graduate here in the Caribbean, Barbados, go for a six months internship in the Singapore Industrial Park in China, where all of the major Fortune 500 companies are located. Uh, this is the, the, the Silicon Valley of China. And our students and graduates will be able to have the internships in this environment and to have a pathway to China. So we are creating for our younger citizens a pathway to China in science, technology, education. These kinds of relationships are going to drive this phase of the globalization of the UWA. And we intend to develop similar strategies with countries around the world to widen UWI's global footprint and to carry the UWI brand into the wider world. But to do this, we will need uh, the partnership with all of our respective governments, because as I have said, our governments are currently using foreign policy issues as a critical part of the search for economic value in new, in new direction. So, so again, articulation, campus, and country, university and region, working hand in hand to create a new environment in the years ahead. So Hilary, I have another question here on um, our live chat. Under your vision, what is the role of the UWI as a regional institution in fostering a deeper process of Caribbean integration at all levels, political, economic, social, and, cult and cultural? But the, again, the, the UWI was established with precisely this remit. Precisely this remit to, to, to pull this region together, this, this fragmented region. And in a sense, to, 
to, to, to counter, to counter the, the humorous point which was made once by Dr. Eric Williams, you know, uh, when, the, when the West Indies Federation broke up, um, Dr. Eric Williams in his typical humorous fashion uh, once said, uh, what, what God has put asunder, let no man put together. <laughs> <laughs>